Hello everyone and welcome to my little session about lifestyle gamification. This is Yukai Chow and I'm gonna start off with a little background of myself first. So I've been an entrepreneur for eight years. Wow, that's a really long time. Seven years. Seven years. Most recently uh, I was running this startup called Reward Me which was a digital loyalty system um, for re restaurants and brick and mortar stores. For Reward Me I raised about a little over a million dollars. We were rated as the top 10 private companies to watch by Always On and uh, you know did some good things. My previous company, FD Career, that was rated on Mashable as one of the social, top 10 social networks for Gen Ys, uh, according to Mashable. And we had a partnership with Disney, but you know, definitely a lot more failures than successes uh, for these startups and there's definitely a lot, um, a lot of experiences that I've learned from. Uh, more importantly, in terms of what I'm doing these days, is I'm one of the uh, more uh, renowned uh, experts, you could say, in gamification in the world. So um, I teach a lot about gamification, sometimes entrepreneurs and social media in Stanford University. And uh, I was rated a top five gamification guru in the world by Leaderboarded. So, you know doing a lot of consulting these days and love teaching people about my experiences and hopefully uh, you guys can benefit from that too. Right, so since my expertise is in gamification and you guys are really trying to learn how to power up your life, right? You're trying to figure out how to make something big and really create an impact in life. I thought today would be a really good opportunity to talk about something that I'm pretty uh, passionate about which is lifestyle gamification. How do you transform your life into a game? So, before anything, let's have a little background about what is gamification, right? Gamification is the craft of pulling all the fun and addicting elements of games and applying that to non-game contexts, such as education, legal work, product design, basically making everything that you have to do fun to do make something that you actually want to do and so that's obviously very valuable because in life there are things that you you know you like doing maybe playing games but it's not very productive if you play 10, 10 hours of games every single day for 40 years you're not gonna have a great life or a very happy slash impactful life but then there are things that you have to do like work studying acquiring knowledge networking stuff for some people um, and they really just don't like it but they have to do it so gamification is combining the two and making things that you have to do more exciting. So imagine if you like play a game and the more hours you spend on it, the more productive you are. You can make income through it, you make the world better, and you somehow also make your family closer, right? If there was a, g a game like that, wouldn't that be amazing? And that is the vision gamification tries to fulfill. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, my experiences in terms of um, getting into gamification. I actually started in gamification since 2003, um, I guess which was a little longer than I was an entrepreneur for, but that made me one of the earlier pioneers in gamification. Uh, of course, back then it wasn't really coined that. So, um, so I've been a gamer for a very long time, for, I don't know, 20, 23 years, whatever. Um, since I was uh, living in South Africa, but and I and I would be a very hardcore gamer. You know, whatever I played, I couldn't just like play a little bit and then just you know leisure and then let go. I had to like I had to be the best. Well, I had not the best, but I had to be very very good at any game I played. So I would use Excel spreadsheets to figure out the best combination. I'm always reading strategy guides, research on the internet. When I'm sitting on the toilet, I'm I'm thinking about how to play the game better. And when I was in um, 10th grade, 10th to 11th grade, I was very hardcore on this game called Diablo 2. Some of you guys might know it. Um, and, you know, I spent a lot of time um, becoming a really strong player in the game. I had like a level 97 assassin, 90, level 94 paladin, I have level 90, you know, 88 necromancer, just a lot of time. But... Then at one point, my uh, my friend started to quit the game and move on to the next game, so I quit too. So I was in this transition period between 
quitting a game and finding a new game to play. And I just felt extremely empty. I was thinking that, you know, I spent thousands upon thousands of hours playing Diablo 2, you know, uh, getting experience, leveling up, getting more gold, getting better gear, learning skill points, right? And now I have nothing. You know, my account is going to be deleted after certain months of inactivity. And, um, and it's just like a big part of my was just gone. It was meaningless. There's no point to it. And, um, and I was thinking, hey, if I spend all those thousands of hours learning a new language, like Spanish maybe, so I don't have to do this talk in English, <laughs> or, or playing the violin, you know, I could have ascended into a whole new level. You know, imagine what you can do with a few thousand hours of just doing one thing. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty profound when you think about it. So since that, at that point, I became extremely obsessed with two things, right? Making games more productive and making life more fun. And I was thinking, you know, what kind of game is there that people can't, like everyone's playing, a lot of people are playing, and people can't just quit and move on to a new game. Right? And and also what kind of game is just really it just really has a little more impact. And then I figured it out. It's the game of life, right? If you were your own RPG character, I guess for a broader demographic, RPG stands for role playing game and it's those games where you control a character, you run around, you kill monsters, you get experience and you be, become stronger as you go. Um there's relatively less learning curve because, but your character gets stronger. Um, but if you were your own RPG character, you wouldn't stay in town all day and be idle and walk back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and just talk to like computer-generated characters for and do nothing, right? Which is what most people do when they just sit home and sit up and watch TV. No, of course not. You would go out and kill, start killing monsters, getting experience, leveling up, figuring out what skills you need to pick up to. You to conquer, you know, conquer the quests you need to do, find allies, people with complementary skills, find people that are higher level than you so they can help you level up faster, find people lower level than you so you can men so you can like help them level up. You know, you would do all of that and instead of stay at town. So back then, again, I was in high school, I realized that hey, um, you know, everyone's playing this game, but not everyone knows they were uh, not everyone knows that they were playing the game. Not everyone knew they were playing the game. My English isn't that great either, apparently. Um, and um, so they're just at, at town pretty idling, you know. High school kids, even college kids, they just, just chill. They have fun, party. Doesn't really amount to too much. And but So if I started out going out and start leveling up, killing monsters, exper getting experience, by the time these people figured out, hey, you know, I'm playing this game, I should probably go out and leveling up too. You know, by then they they would still be level one, but I'd be maybe level 28, so I would be have a head start. And my goal at the time was to be the strongest player on my server, right? Which kind of just means the world that you can realistically interact with. <laughs> um, a lot of key key game terms. I haven't talked about it much because. These days, I'm more I more talk about uh, enterprise gamification, how to motivate your work staff, less on the the gaming stuff. But but that was my experience. So so I wanted to be the strongest player. So I started out early, and by my eleventh grade, I was almost doing everything really well. Like I got a four point oh in my school. I I won a um, state champion in chess, or my team did that. I was coaching and leading one state champion. I got second, I think, in the state in our division. Um, I, my violin playing got really good. I mean, still not super good, but I was in a state uh, con like um, symphony and in the state competition. And the swim, uh, swimming, I was in the state and regional competition. I I scored top score in my uh, forensic speech uh, competitions, and I do I, so. I, so I played a lot of different things, you know. I, and and those were all games to me, and and I'm just trying to elevate myself. And, and then I started my first business. I, I wouldn't have become an entrepreneur if I didn't have realized that, if I didn't see myself as a game character. And so when I created a company, it's almost like a real-time strategy game like StarCraft, where I would create an entity, I would allocate resources, figure out how to, how to create something awesome, right? So, so I think that 
mentality of thinking things like a game motivate me, motivated me to do a lot of things. But, and, uh, but also, I really felt the, the experience I had playing games prepared me in many levels to think, to, to make decisions, to problem solve. So that was pretty cool too. Um, so I think it kind of paid off. You know, I am 27 right now. And as far as I know, you know, not in a very bragging arrogance. Of course, I am full of myself. You can tell already, right? Um, but, you know, I think as a 27-year-old, I'm, you know, regularly slash occasionally, depending on how you count it, uh, get invited to, to be a lecturer at Stanford University. I, I've done some talks at Google um, about lifestyle gamification, actually. I get flown, uh, you know, people fly me internationally to talk about gamification. So right now, I'm actually in a hotel in Denmark. Um, and then I'm to, today, tonight I'm going to Berlin, no, Berlin, yes, and then Munich, and then um, Geneva, and then London, and then, you know, four days ago I had a speech in, uh, I have a keynote speech in Atlanta. So, you know, people fly me around, they, you know, I'm, I'm doing consulting work, and um, again, this is not for for bragging or anything, but just, just sharing like what, what, you know, something that shows that Doing this pays off, you know. Right now, as a consultant, I am charging two hundred fifty dollars per hour, which uh, which I I personally think is pretty high. It you know um, it's, it's it's close to what my lawyer charges me, um, and you know some people tell me I can even move up. I'm not you know especially for enterprise customers. I recently formed the uh, the uh, the enterprise uh, gamification consultancy with three other gamification experts, and we probably will start moving our prices up. Uh, most likely, actually. Um, so, so you know, I think I've done pretty well there because I started early. I really treated my life as a game, and when I see it as a game, I really try to master the game. And so, so I wanted to walk through some steps about how to kind of analyze your life as a game and how to really be proactive and and really pick up pick up what you really want to do because. In a, in a game, it's all about sometimes it's all about decision of how you want to develop your character, right? You want to build your character and what kind of things uh, you want to take that person in. So, um, so I'm gonna just kind of go through some some step by step processes. So, one thing that's interesting to to recognize, and I like to use a lot of game analogies, as you can see. Um, see, a lot of people in society they're not proactive. You know, they're, they're aiming for stability. And for these people, I call them NPCs, um, which, in, which are, you know, non-playable characters. You can look that up on Wikipedia. But those are basically the computer-generated characters uh, in an RPG game, in a virtual world, where when you talk to them, they always tell you the sa exact same line. You know, they give you... They're useful. They always have some function in the game. But... You know they're they're always there where you, where you expect them to be. When you go back to town, this spot you see this NPC, and you can buy you can buy gear from this one. You can buy potions from that one. You can heal yourself on this one, right? They're very consistent. They're NPCs, right? And you can tell when a person's NPC it, when you know you talk to someone, uh, an old friend, maybe a few years later, three five years later, and you say, Hey, so how's it going? What are you doing these days? And he's like, oh, same old, you know, I'm just doing the usual. Those people, and nothing against them because there's a lot of value and stability too. Um, you know, some people really feel like they want to have a stable, sustainable um, lifestyle so they can so it can fuel their other passions and hobbies. It depends on what they're doing, right? Um, but in the hardcore lifestyle gamification route, you don't want to be an NPC. You want to be a main character, right? No one can ever say, "Oh, you just travel through this mountain and go there, and then you'll see them, and you'll meet the main character," right? Because the main character is always traveling, always in different places, fulfilling different quests, always on adventures, changing the world, right? You can never, you can never pinpoint where that person is because that person's always moving, always changing, always doing different things. And I think since you only have one life, you know, 80, 90 years, whatever you, you, you. you whatever you eat, I guess, and uh, how, however much you exercise. Um, you know, you have one life, so why don't you live it to the fullest? Why don't you try to accomplish the most with that life? You know, they say, make a dent in the universe. Spark. Create the bigger spark, right? Make sure that because you lived in this world for your 80 years, 
the world is a little bit better or maybe a lot better, right? That's something interesting that I thought about Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs died pretty early, right? And he's one of the very few people that because he died early, the world is completely different. Like if he died at 80, right, that means he'll live for another 20 years. Imagine how much he could have done in 20 years. The world will be completely different. But, you know, he, he died early, so he had, he had 20 years less than anyone else. And therefore, you know, we're in a, we're in a maybe, I think maybe a less cooler world because of it. And you would never know what that world will be if Steve Jobs stayed alive for long. But that's something you kind of want to establish for yourself. So I wanted to quickly go over six steps to, to, to level up and really figure out how you're going to gamify your life, right? And, um, you know, just a quick, quick, quick overview. One is to pick your game. Two is to pick your role. Three is to pick your, find your stats. Four is to uh, figure out the skills you need to learn. Five is to combine with the alliances. And then six is to figure out your quest. All right. So the first thing you want to do is you want to pick your game. Right? There's a lot of games out there. There's real-time shooting games. There's strategy games. There's like Farmville social games. There's Angry Bird games. And everyone likes different games. So you need to figure out what game appeals to you. Like I really don't like shooting games. First, I get dizzy and I, you know, I don't really, you know, it's just like boom, 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 and then it's done. I really like, you know, strategy games um, where where I can. Just, yeah, man, they all have strategies, but I like to control armies of people and build things and stuff like that. So you really want to pick the game that fits for you. And and uh, for that game, and that basically is your industry. The game, what I, when I say game, it's the industry you need to pick. And that is based on your passions. Dunk. Um, you want to, for that, you want to pick generic industries, right? Like the music industry, you're passionate about music, sports, you know, um, productivity, you know, drilling, if you're interested in drilling. Uh, but pick generic industry fields. At this point, when you're picking your game, don't think about your talents yet. Don't factor in what you really get at this point. Because, you know, that that's something that you would figure out later on. But at this point, it's something big, like, for instance, solving global warming, you know, that is, a, that is an industry. That is a game you pick. Or make the internet more efficient, right? Figure out the best search engine out there. See how much time I have. Okay, cool. Um, and when you pick an industry or pick a game that you, that you like, that passion leads to better work ethics and more fun when you're doing it. So the reason why I say don't factor your skills yet is because you want to be in the place you want to be at. Even if you didn't have a lot of skills, let's say even if you were just a janitor cleaning stuff, but you're passionate about music, I believe that you would be happier being a janitor for a music company than a janitor for a biochemistry company, right? So you got to kind of define that. What is that industry you want to be in? So the second one is determine your role. So your role, so in a game, you know, like Diablo, you're, you're picking uh, your role. Are you the barbarian? Are you the, magi you're the magician? Are you the necromancer? Are you the archer? You know, what, what are you? And that is more based on your skills and your interests. So how to determine your role? You need, the first thing you need to do is to think, figure out your initial stats, right? And figure out your build. So what, are, what is that, right? In a game, if you have a ton of strength, but very weak magic power, you're not going to be a wizard. You could, but you'll be a very miserable wizard. Like, you know, you'll, you'll always be struggling against the tide unless you really want to be a wizard and you're ready to struggle your entire life until you become a legacy and a, an inspirational story. You know, you probably should choose to be a warrior, right? Because you're strong in strength. Um, so you want to find your initial stats. And those are just things that, like, what are you good at? Like, what are your innate tan talents? What do you do better than everyone else in the world? Or, you know, at least in your classroom or among your pair, uh, peers or among your, your, your uh, family. So, again, don't be an X-Men if your strength is in magic, you know. Um, so, I usually like to um, figure out a, a talent triangle. So, basically, I think everyone has maybe one thing that they probably do better than anyone else. And this, and this isn't like a, a real skill yet. This is your stats, your initial um, abilities. So this would be something like something vague like creativity. 
emotional intelligence, leadership, associative thinking, you know, analytical skills. Those are what I'm talking about. Not, you know, archery or violin or chess or, you know, um, Porter's Five Forces, you know, not those. But basically, what your what is your brain better at? And sometimes you'll figure it out, um, figure those out when you see like, hey, you know, my classmates um, all took so long in doing this, but I spent, I did it quickly. I'm pretty good at. So I think there's one thing that you're really good at. You want to define what that is, and there maybe there's two or three things that you're also very good at, but it's not your best best. And then there's you know, and then there's and it kind of trickles down. There's some things that you're pretty good. You know, those are just things to round your your skills up. You know, I'm a, I'm a kind of good speaker, but that's not my like like my my peer um, strength. That's just something that helps me out. Like when I actually need to speak, I can speak. But maybe my my best ability is creativity. I can also speak. so so you want to kind of figure out your triangle, right? You're, and then once you figure out your triangle, then you can move on to the next level, which is figure out your skill sets. You know, build your skill uh, skill slash ability tree. Now in a game, there's always a lot of games. Act there's there's um, skill trees that you need to figure out. You know, at the beginning, you can choose this skill that can unlock that skill. They can unlock this skill, and you have to invest invest points into it, ability points uh, when you level up. You know, you and there's always a limited amount of ability points, which is re reflects real life because you have a limited amount of time to learn any skill, right? So. What you want to do is you want to figure out your ideal skill combo. These skills all need to be complementary. Um, so it's pointless mastering axe skills and sword skills you know, at the same time because you can only use one weapon at a time, maybe. like Just, just pretend that's, the, that's true. Uh, right? so, instead of, so instead of dividing all your points into your swords and axe, you should choose one. I want to master my axe. And then I want to master an iron skin that to protect myself. I want to master, and then I want to, you know, invest points into jumping very far and then throwing my axe. You know, you, the, these skills need to be complementary. And you know, maybe complementary just means you can use all of them at once. So, for instance, like a language skill, right? You know, English, and finance, and um, and uh, let's see, what's what's an interest? So English, finance, and violin skills don't necessarily work together, right? But English and finance and um, speaking skills allow, or you know, communication skills allow you to um, align those those skill sets and you know, go internationally and speak about finances, teach people finances, right? So you want to really think about what kind of skill combination you want to put together to create your unique. Uh, character because every character is different. Everyone, even everyone who knows finance, you know, they their backup their backup abilities are all different. And you know, obviously within finance, there's a lot of little split split things you can learn too. So you want to create your best combination with these complementary skills. Um, and obviously, needlessly, you need to focus on a few essential skills. Don't. It's better to be awesome at a few things than suck at everything, right? Sure, you agree. Um, so focus on the few things that are really complementary with each other, and um, and really start investing your skill points, which is really your time, into it. Do more of those activities, and um, again, make sure there's there's a synergy. And for skills, there's another triangle that's involved. Um, so again, what what and and for your skills and abilities. There's actually two triangles, your skill triangle now and your skill triangle that you want to become. So now you can say, hey, you know, right now my number one skill is coaching. I'm very good at coaching people. And then number two is networking. I'm good at making friends. Um, and then number three is social media, right? I know how to do this Twitter stuff, SEO, all that stuff, right? But that's in terms of where my character is going to become, uh, where, where my character is going. That's 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 not where my final skill triangle is. My final skill triangle is I want to be a leader in the industry. So my number one, I want to make to be leadership. Number two, I want it to be gamification, right? Let's say number three, I want to be trilingual: English, Chinese, Spanish, right? And number number four, I want to then social media. I could say there. That's fine. So once you identified, you know what you are good at now and what you 
want to be good at in the future, you know, your, your final character ideation, um, the ideal stage, right? You figure out, you know, when I'm fully developed, I need to be the best at this. I need to be very good at these two things, these other two things. I need to be also very good, but not super, super good at these other two things. And eventually I need to be better than the average person at these things, but, you know, I don't have to be amazing at it, you know, visual design skills or whatever. Um, so you figure out your skill triangle. The, ne the next step is you find allies, right? And again, usually you want to partner up with people. So you want to find people who are playing the same game as you, which means they have the same passion, but they have complementary skills, right? If you are a wizard, which means you do a lot of damage, um, but when someone hits you once you die, you want to partner up with people who are warriors, who can tank for you, who takes a lot of hits and you're at the back just killing people or monsters. You know, killing people is bad. Um, and so, you know, in life, if you are good at uh, marketing, you want to find engine good engineers to build your alliances. You know, when you're not on the same little quest, that's fine. But if you care about the same thing, you want to stay in touch with them. They're your allies. You want to build friendship with these people. Obviously, be genuine. It's not You're not trying to use them, but you're trying to say, hey, since we're on the same quest, eventually we might team up together, right? It just makes sense. It's not really trying to use people. Um, it's, it's called companionship. And, um, and also, but, you know, the common example is, oh, marketing person with engineer, right? But it doesn't have to be. Like, if you have a traditional business and you're good at marketing, you, could, you can uh, partner up with a finance person, accounting person, right? It, it doesn't... As long as the person has skills that you don't have, um, or you're good at operations, you know sy systems and logistics, and the other guy is a great salesperson and he's a great speaker, right? You know, those are all different skills. Um, and so you want to find people who have complementary skills but are, have the same passion, so you can work together one day. Um, obviously, you want to find people who are much higher level than you are, who can be your mentors in the game. I don't know if you experienced when a high level character goes around and you're just following the character and is killing all the tough monsters like in two seconds. Um, you're leveling up very fast, yeah, and that's what you want to do in uh, in the real world. Find people who are mentors who can help you, can who can you know really save you years of your time um, by just pointing you in the right direction, connecting you to the right person. Um, which is, you know, a huge value for joining Jump Labs, right? This is this is why, like, you can make meaningful connections with people who can help you. Um, also, you want to help lower level people level up because, you know, because you have so much. One is to just give back to society, make the world better. You are changing the world, creating impact when you help other people level up. But you know, when they level up, you know, and and they're motivated and they're smart, eventually they'll become high level too, and that they become your best allies. Right, this is what I call vertical networking. So there's two ways. Might be out. Of, I might be short on time soon. Yeah. So instead of just meeting more and more people, you want to help the people in your network become more successful, which is what I call vertical networking. Then finally, it's to complete your quests. Right. So at the beginning, you want to find small quests that help you, you know, get more experience, level up, learn your skill sets, and it, the small quest slowly leads you to beating your final mission. So if your final mission is creating the perfect search engine in the world, right? Then your, you know, your small quest is to get into a good college uh, that has a good um, software engineering school, right? That's maybe one thing. So you want to just think about, uh, or and then maybe finding an internship at a current search engine company, right? So, so there's, so there's small quests that will help you beat your final mission. And just keep in mind, in life, even if you fail at a quest, you still accumulate the experience. So don't be afraid of failure. When you fail, everything you've learned is still there. You're still leveling up. Your character grows. And you want to level up and grow with teammates. So, you know, though, when, remember the allies I talked about? When you go through small quests together, both of you grow, but also you build trust with each other. You get better dynamics. You know what they're good at. You know what they're not good at. And you know what when to work with them. So you don't want to work with them necessarily immediately with on the biggest quest, right? You want to start small and grow together and see what we're good at. And, you know, just really be persistent. Don't be afraid of rejection and failure because that's really what I call the harmless dragon that looks scary, but, you know, it breathes fire on you, but you're invincible too. And you can never get hurt by the harmless dragon in terms of, like, reaching out to people and say, hey, you know, let's do something. Then finally, beating the game, right? When you beat the game, you... you, you Conquer what you set up to at the, at the beginning, right? You, you solve global warming as hard as that is. Um, 
that's when you fulfill your life with meaning, right? And that's and to do that, that to do that, you you need to make every day count, right? You, every single day, you need to work hard towards. If you want to accomplish uncommon things in your life, you need to spend every single day of your life uncommonly. Because if you spend every day like everyone else, you'll end up like everyone else, right? It's, magic doesn't happen. Um, and just keep in mind that the journey is the fun part. Regardless if you beat the game or not, you know, if every game on day one you press a button, you beat the game, that's a really boring game. No one wants to play those games, right? So a game is fun when there's a journey, when there's ups and downs, when there's suffering, when there's persecution, and, you know, you're learning, you're overcoming these challenges. That's what makes a game fun. So focus on the journey, focus on learning, and once you really beat the game, you can retire or, you know, find new games to master. And it's always a lifelong journey. People beat a game, they move on to the next game that they're passionate about. So anyway, out of time, this is Yukai Chow. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always email me at yukai at yukaichow.com. Um, and you can go to yukaichow.com to check out my blog. I write a lot about gamification and also my framework Octalysis, which is translated to seven different languages. It's very useful for any gamification process, so check it out. This is a plug, but it's also super useful for you. Um, all right, hopefully you have an amazing day, and I will see you next time, if I ever see you.